the man we honor this afternoon, now and forever, number 18, Daryl Strawberry. Amazing, isn't it? All these years later, this band of brothers remains as close as ever. It's wonderful. Now today, Daryl Strawberry is cemented in the history of this franchise forever, joining an exclusive group of Mets excellence. He joins number 37, Casey Stengel. Number 14, Gil Hodges. Number 41, Tom Seaver. Number 31, Mike Piazza. Number 36, Jerry Kuzman. Number 17, Keith Hernandez. Number 24, Willie Mays. Number 16, Dwight Gooden. Bob Murphy. Ralph Kiner. Bill Shea. And across all of Major League Baseball, number 42, Jackie Robinson. These are the legends that Daryl Strawberry joins this afternoon. 
Uh, Daryl, in honor of your special day, the New York Mets would like to present you with gifts to commemorate this monumental occasion. A framed jersey with your soon-to-be-retired number 18 and framed artwork commemorating the legendary 525-foot home run you hit off the Kevlar roof in Montreal's Olympic Stadium. Welcome home, Daryl. City Field is all yours. Nothing like being home. Thank you. Thank you. First, I'd like to give honor to God. I'd like to thank him for his grace, his mercy, and his love for my life. Today I come back to say thank you to a lot of people. First, Steve. And Alex, thank you. Thank you for what you have done on this very special day. Remembering the players of the history of this organization. Myself today, I celebrate you, your team, and the fans. I'd also like to say thank you to Fred Wilpon, Nelson Doubleday, Frank Cassian. Had it not been for them making a decision to draft me, I would have never been the first pick in the draft in 1980. I'm truly grateful being selected number one in that draft of 1980 by the New York Mets. When they came and got me out of class and they said, you've been drafted by the New York Mets, number one, I said, where the heck is New York at? Little did I know that I would come to the greatest place to play baseball. Little did I know I would play in front of the greatest fans forever. There was nothing like playing the Queens. There was nothing like playing the Shea Stadium. The memories I hold will be forever. I will always cherish them. I'd like to say thank you to the scouts that drafted me. Roger and Harry Miner out of Southern California. But my greatest thank you is to you all, the fans. I would have never became the player I became had it not been for you guys pushing me. You pushed me into my destiny to be great. You challenged me, and I loved it. The curtain calls, the booze, and all of it came together to make me the best player that I ever was playing here in Queens for those eight seasons. Thank you.
And one thing I want to say to you fans, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart, I'm so sorry for ever leaving you guys. I'm truly deeply sorry that I ever left you guys. I've never played baseball in front of fans greater than you guys. You made Queens and Shea Stadium home. There was nothing greater than playing in front of you guys all those great years. Now I want to thank a few people that helped me get to where I need to get. Chuck Hiller, my rookie ball coach. Gene Dusan, my able coach, and my double-A coach. Davey Johnson. Jim Fry. Had it not been for Jim Fry, my rookie season, when I was supposed to be at the ballpark early, at 1 o'clock, and I didn't show up to 3 o'clock, he got in my face and said, I'm never going to wait for you again, kid. If you want to be great at this game, you want to be a great player, you'll be at this ballpark early every day. From that day forward, I was at the ballpark early every day, and I would go on to win Rookie of the Year before him. Thank you, Jim. Thank you to Bill Robinson, another great coach. Bobby Valentine, another great coach for me. Buddy Harrelson, another great coach for me. My teammates over the year. I wouldn't have never been a great player wasn't for the teams I played on. It takes players to make you better. And all the guys I played with inspired me to be better. I want to say thank you to Gary Carter. Mookie Wilson. Mookie Wilson and Gary Carter stands out more than anything to me. Not because of them being a great baseball player. And I've said it many times. It's about the man, Gary Carter and Mookie Wilson, was in front of me. Today, I get to live that life today because I saw it through those two guys. And I'm forever grateful for who they are. And now, I'd like to say thank you to Keith Hernandez. Had it not been for Keith, I wouldn't have never been the player that I turned out to be. He taught me so much about the game. He's the greatest player that I've ever played with. Most intense player I have to play with. The greatest knowledge of a player I ever played with. Helped drive me to be successful. He taught me how to hit left hand pitching. And I remember when I learned from him, I ended up hitting 20 home runs in the season off of left handers because of Keith. A lot of times, God, guys don't like to take credit for what they do, but they're great examples for you.
Thank you, Ron Darling. For being such a great teammate. Being well educated, Yale University. Smarter than everybody else in the clubhouse. Thank you to all the guys that are here today. The 86 Mets, John Franco, John Gibbons, Doc Gooden. Hojo, Hojo, me and Hojo, 30-30 together, only 30-30 together ever in the history of baseball. Barry Lyons, Kevin Mitchell. Thank you for making the trip. Jesse Orozco, Rafael Santana. I want to say thank you to all my amazing friends, pastor friends who are here today. There are too many of you to mention, each one of you, but you are a blessing in my life. And I thank you for that. I'd like to say thank you to my mother. Mom, I love you. Thank you for always praying for me. Thank you for always caring for me when I couldn't care for myself. You was always there in the middle, interceding for me. And I'm forever grateful, Mom. I will see you one day again. Thank you to my brothers, Michael and Ronnie. My sister, Regina and Michelle. My godparents, Paul Leonard and Papa Leonard. My father-in-law and my mother-in-law. Jerry and Peggy, who's from St. Louis. Their wonderful daughter's from St. Louis. And she told her parents, I'm coming home from Florida. And she said, I'm bringing Daryl Strawberry with me. Her father said, he played for the Mets. And then he dropped the phone. But had it not been for them accepting me in their life and their family, I wouldn't be standing here today. My life has been transformed because of my wife. I am so grateful and thankful that the Lord has given me a wife that pays more attention to me than I pay to myself. Because of her love, I ended up in the emergency room three months ago, almost losing my life. I had a massive heart attack. I was at 40%. And had it not been for my wife getting me in, I might not be here today. Thank you to my beautiful children, DJ Diamond, Jordan J, Drew, Alice Omar, Austin Evan. And the greatest gift I've ever received was accepting the Lord in my life. Not just becoming a baseball player, but becoming a man. Sandy Carter, your husband, Gary Carter, and Mookie Wilson was a great example that I've ever seen as a man. And I thank God for them and what they meant to me, and what they meant to the city of New York. But most of all, to you fans, and to the players of the day, embrace this. It goes fast. These are the greatest fans you will ever play in front of.
They will stand on their feet for you and cheer you on. They will let you know when you suck. Don't worry about it, guys. It's part of it. But push through, because you guys have it. You have the talent. Believe in each other. Care for each other. Trick each other off. And I just want to say to Steve and Alex, for this organization, David Stern, the best is yet to come for you guys. Just know that. It's a process, but the best will come. Because you guys have the right heart for it. To make these fans great again. Because they are faithful. And I experienced it more than you could ever imagine. And I'm forever grateful for this day. I celebrate you guys. I will never forget you guys. You guys will always be in my thoughts and my prayers. And I love you guys. And God bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Direct your attention to the retired numbers in left field where Darrell's number 18 is unveiled. Congratulations, Daryl. Let's give one more hand for today's honoree, Daryl Strawberry. Well, there has never been a shred of doubt about the charisma that Daryl Strawberry possesses. And if you needed a reminder, from the day he last played for the Mets in 1990. He reminded you of that today. He is one of the greatest players ever to put on a Mets uniform. And your eyes were riveted to him every time he stood in the batter's box. And everybody in this ballpark was riveted to Darrell as he accepted his number retired in perpetuity here today.